on today's video brought to you by Open Digital, we're going to be talking about the age old question, the head to head, David and Goliath, WordPress versus Drupal. And I know pitting the two against each other isn't really fair because there are different use cases for both, but it seems to be what always everybody's talking about WordPress or Drupal since they are two very large um, players in the CMS space. On that note, today we're joined by one of our in-house experts who just so happens to be the CEO of Open Digital, Chris Smith. Thanks for joining us today. You always have a wealth of knowledge to bring, so happy to have you here. Well, thanks, Ryan, for having me back on the, the podcast. I'm really excited to talk about the subject. I know it's a popular one. Yeah, it's people have, like I mentioned in, in the beginning, people pit the two together, but it's not exactly a fair comparison um, from what we've seen. And, you know, being in this space, Open has been around 11 years now um, in the web development and design space. So we've seen it all and we want to talk about the two. We've seen this on YouTube a lot. So um, let's get into it. So it's first important to note that Drupal is more of a CMS framework, um, whereas WordPress is not. Um, you know, it's it's often important to develop an interface for clients and that that they'll find it easy to to use in house. You know, WordPress is generally defined as the more simplistic uh, CMS versus Drupal, but I think things are changing now. Um, you know, Drupal's been catering more towards marketers, content creators, and I think we're seeing a shift in the um, in the usability of Drupal. So. Who, in your opinion, uses WordPress and who uses Drupal? So Ryan, first thing, the shift that you're talking about, I completely agree with you that there has been a shift in content management systems, you know, over the last 10 years, um, you know, while I've been working with them, at least. Now, when it comes to Drupal um, and that shift around complexity and user experience, like I think that anyone that's been using Drupal for quite some time now would tell you that the reputation for the Drupal content management system has always been that Drupal is for developers, that it, it was too complex to use as a communications officer, as a marketer, that you had to know code, you had to be able to write code um, to create successful um, and effective websites using Drupal. And I will say since Drupal 6, and you know that's almost 10 years ago at this point, since Drupal 6, we've seen um, a lot of investment in the user experience and the publishing experience and making Drupal just generally a lot easier to use. But now with that said, WordPress, you know, even back from 10 years ago up to today has always been the most prominent content management system on the internet. You know, you see these numbers all over the place that WordPress is anywhere 40 to 60% of the market share of all content management systems out there. I don't know the number exactly, but the question kind of becomes, well, I, like your, well, I think you asked a really important question is who's using WordPress and, and who's using right. Drupal. But then there's also that second question of like, why is there just so much more WordPress than there is Drupal? And so to understand who's using it, um, one of the things to, to keep in mind is WordPress has never had a reputation um, similar to Drupal so being difficult to use. It was never, um, as far as I can remember, never perceived as the content management system for engineers or for developers. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's always maintained the strong reputation of the content management system for publishers, for communicators, for bloggers, exactly, for writers. Yeah. I believe that WordPress has had a huge head start. Um, because of this in terms of adoption. And that's why you're seeing tens of millions of uh, WordPress installations around the world. Right. But then and, the question yeah. you asked me is who's using, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'm, I'm just going on here. No, no, it's okay. I, you're, we're passionate about this okay. here at Open. So that's, that's totally fine. <laughs> um, you know, and sure. as me, I'm a, I'm a marketer, right? So I'm, I'm, um, Part of the group that is that is less technical than yourself and developers. Um, and you know, when I was learning Drupal, I can't deny that the the learning curve is a bit steeper, and that's for sure. But it's it's really fun to see the results of something that you've creating really begin to be seen, and that is what have people have been experiencing with Drupal eight and beyond. Correct? Because I, I don't believe Drupal seven has the capability to have that sort of um, that enhancement for marketers and content creators. Um, and I think that is falls into the why these differences exist because that was a big push by Drupal to sort of emulate the functionality that WordPress has while also having the 
power and the robustness that Drupal has been well known for. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You're seeing a lot of the features that WordPress got to first now being brought into Drupal. One of the simplest features, and it's been now in Drupal for years, but WordPress had it well before us, was just the WYSIWYG editor, right? Yeah. The ability, yeah. think of how simple this is, right? But to underline or bold your font as you're publishing content, that was not a default feature in Drupal until you have many, to grab many a developer and have them do it, make changes, yeah. and yeah, it, it costs a lot of time at work. That's that's exactly, and of course, you know, you could hear the, the cheers of the community and all of the Drupal <laughs> users when Drupal finally added to include the WYSIWYG editor in Drupal out of the box. But yeah. you know, the why does this difference exist? Well, I think that there's some fundamental differences between WordPress and Drupal that we just need to remember is that when Drupal was founded and as the community really started to develop around Drupal, things like flexibility, these were the goals of Drupal. They really did have their eyes set on being an enterprise content management framework. I'm gonna borrow your word from earlier. We were talking about when it comes to Drupal. WordPress today is still widely used for publishing on public uh, websites, but it's very rarely used for things like um, building intranets, um, for custom web applications, or even as the backbone of more robust enterprise systems, um, you know, that require a lot more configuration and customizability, right? Right. And that's where you see Drupal strengths really coming through. Drupal maintained a lot of its framework-like um, aspects from those early days when it was predominantly built for developers looking to create applications. And they were able to improve the publishing experience while keeping that flexibility and that robustness in check. Right. So today in Drupal, you see these concepts that you'll never find in WordPress, things like content types, right? The ability to store not even just store, sorry, but also create custom data schematics and data, um, you know, data models using Drupal through the graphical interface, not even having to be a programmer. Now that allows the publishers and the users to create any type of content, to store any type of content um, that they want. And that could be anything from media assets to, to written content. Um, but also you see things like resources. Um, a lot of people are now digitizing PDF resources and things, creating content types for those. I guess what I'm trying to get at is that Drupal still has that core framework element behind it that allows it to be used for web applications, internet, mm -hmm. all these other business cases. Whereas you're really still not seeing that in WordPress. Um, yeah, and, and I think the differences, we, we say why do the differences exist, but I think it's the common case of when you have two competing, um, two competing products, Drupal and WordPress, you find that these differences are sort of starting to narrow, or at least they're trying to emulate one and the other, right? So WordPress wants to become more of a framework, where Drupal wants to become more user-friendly, sim uh, similar to WordPress. Again, WordPress is still, like we were saying in the beginning, a content management system as opposed to Drupal being that content management framework. They're both trying to, you know, to, to, to pick up the slack in the areas that, where they're lacking, obviously, to sort of become the ultimate framework. And I guess those, those differences exist just in terms of use cases and when to use it and how to use it, um, which conveniently leads us to the next topic, which is when to use Drupal, when to use WordPress. Uh, what are the, the key differences and, and the use cases behind um, both of those, these platforms, you know, you're the expert. What, when would you, if, if I wanted to have a website, when would you, what would you recommend? I know we're a little biased because we're a Drupal shop, but um, when would you use WordPress first Drupal? So I, I, I will say I am certainly biased. I want to <laughs> almost just say, Ryan, well, always use Drupal, right? Yeah. There's, there's no reason not to, but we have to be fair. We, yeah. I'm going to try to be impartial. We'll see how well I do. Um, so I'd say at the beginning today with the latest version of Drupal, the latest version of WordPress, I think that when choosing between the two, first thing to keep in mind is that Drupal has come a long way in the publishing experience. If you're looking to create a simple website, um, 10 years ago, you would go to WordPress by default. That was always the answer. Today, I don't think that we can disqualify Drupal even for small medium businesses because it has those tools 
to generate a simple blog or um, actually one thing we saw a lot of, of course, in 2020 was we needed small micro sites um, to um, share content related to COVID um, for our clients. And so Drupal and WordPress, you know, from a size perspective, I don't think that we can separate them like we used to. There's a few things that Drupal, I believe, um, would separate or, or help me make my decision. I think the first one is the level of flexibility that we need and the different types of content that we're going to store in our content management system or on our website. So if I've got um, you know, one or two types of content, so think like uh, evergreen content, like a basic page, that would be like your company profile page or your, right. you know, about your CEO page. Those things don't tend to change that often. So if you've got like this evergreen content and you've got timely content, like articles, like a blog or press releases, and that's about it. And that is probably most websites out there. Um, then I think that WordPress um, is a great CMS for that because WordPress happens to support those content types out of the box really well. Um, and you know, you get all the features that you need, like that WYSIWYG editor we were talking about before for easy publishing. You get a new layout builder um, with Gutenberg, so you can create a little bit more. Um, kind of modern websites by dragging components around. But if your website requires additional content types, what if you wanna promote events? What if you want to um, share resources, for example? What if you need a staff directory with you know, several thousand individual profiles? As your website requires more um, types of content and content templates, you need to then look to, to Drupal. It's a, definitely a big differentiator between the two is Drupal just supports an unlimited number of content types. And so very, very uh, big differentiator there. Another big one, in my opinion, is probably around the media and the media library support. So both systems that are the box now have media libraries um, for digital asset management. However, Drupal is the only system that offers a fully configurable um, digital asset management um, library out of the box. So if you um, expect to have you know, thousands of images and PDF files and documents, um, Drupal has many more controls and features built into it to help you organize those assets into different folders to be able to find them quickly. Whereas WordPress is, um, really kind of limited um, in terms of how it supports media. It, it just treats them all the same way. It's, it's hard to keep them organized when your website tends to scale. And with that said, I would probably say the same thing goes in terms of just content pages themselves. You know, if, if Drupal, or sorry, if your website is going to have hundreds or thousands of pages, you might want to lean more towards Drupal because it has a fully configurable administration interface that allows you to um, find content or configure your, your filters and things like this so that you can find content a lot more quickly. WordPress, however, doesn't have that same level of um, customizability. You can't configure the WordPress content page um, to find content quicker. Mm -hmm. So Drupal tends to make content easier to find. It also helps you manage content a lot better but these problems really only exist for websites at scale when you're talking right, hundreds yeah. if not thousands of pages. So I think that scalability is probably, if I was to sum it up, one of those big factors to think about when choosing between Drupal and WordPress. And I think that Drupal, what you'd find is almost out of the box with Drupal, you're going to get much more uh, robust tools for scalability. Right. Second is um, around security. And so I think that if security, and I mean, there's probably not a single CIO out there that would listen to this podcast that says security is not a concern for me today. Because <laughs> as you know, there's more cyber attacks today than there's ever been before, not just yeah. domestic, but internationally as well. So enterprise level security, just having security being a priority in the product's development. Um, I think that that's a big differentiator between WordPress and Drupal. Mm -hmm. You really see that reflected in the way that both of those open source communities um, review the code that's being created in the add-ons and the plugins and the modules and the themes and the seriousness that both communities are putting into security. Absolutely. With WordPress, one thing that um, you notice quite often in the community is that there are a lot of themes, uh, a lot of plugins being created, 
the code review for those is not necessarily um, very robust. And now they've even um, defined a term, they call it a null, a null plugin or a null theme. These are actually plugins and themes that have not been officially, I'm kind of air quoting here, officially approved for WordPress use. However, there's still the majority of the plugins and themes being used. There's a small subset of the modules and plugins out there that are official, that have gone through proper security reviews. And then there's the vast majority of them in WordPress where um, they have not. And because of that, you see a lot of security risk. You have malicious code being embedded into modules and plugins and things like this. So WordPress, sorry, just to end this uh, thought, WordPress is, um, I find that the, the attention to security of the entire ecosystem, not just the official ecosystem, but the entire ecosystem seems to be a lot more lax than what you see in Drupal. Mm -hmm. At Drupal, we've got uh, dedicated full-time employees on the security council, security advisory council. You don't see this difference between null uh, modules and official modules. Drupal just has drupal.org and every module and every theme in drupal.org is undergoing uh, security reviews and code reviews, not just by the community and the, the volunteers, but also by this dedicated security council. And so I guess what I'm trying to get at here is that Drupal has always been putting security um, at the forefront of product development. They've put in the appropriate governance models. And for some reason, the community just hasn't really shaped out the way that the WordPress community has. And so there's just a lot more tightly knit controls around plugins, modules, themes. So you're not seeing this malicious code, you know, seeping its way into the, the product um, much in the same way you do WordPress. And so I guess what I'm trying to say here is if security is a big concern for your organization, I would also use that as a differentiator between Drupal and WordPress. I think just Drupal wins that that battle hands down. Exactly. And right out of the gate, you know, there's what 1.4 million members in the Drupal community, 121,000 users actively contributing, you know, 46,000 free modules that can be used. And these are all being tested and um, going through quality control methods to make sure that none of this malicious um, stuff is happening to anything that you're using um, related to Drupal, which is, which is phenomenal. So, I mean, that, that pretty much, I think that's a good part to end on is, is obviously security is one of the biggest things you're going to be concerned about. And if you're not, like we were saying, your website's going to be primarily blog posts and you want it to get it up um, running quickly. You just need something. Um, that's definitely a good instance to use it. There's a reason why it does have quite a fair share of the market. So that pretty much sums it up. That wraps up um, our general, fairly high level differences between WordPress and Drupal. And again, it's not meant to pit them both against each other. They do have their use cases and there's definitely a time and a place to use one or the other. And it's all going to be up to you and your organization to determine when you will need a CMS or a CMS framework. Um, so Chris, thank you so much for joining us here today. I know um, we're gonna have a few Great episodes coming up as well in the future. Um, next up, we're going to have the WordPress review on security. So that's going to be a good one. It'll sort of tie into the, uh, the ending of this video. So thanks again for joining us as always. Thank you, Ryan. It's been fun. All right. Take care. Bye now.